Timberwolves. Now we go to basketball. A huge game tonight in Minneapolis between the Timberwolves and the Nuggets. Only a five-game slate around the association on this Tuesday evening. This is the marquee matchup. Both Minnesota and Denver trail Oklahoma City for that top spot by only a half game. But Vecchio, you will see this here. Minnesota, Minnesota, sure, on the second leg of a back-to-back with a change of venue from Salt Lake back to the Twin Cities. But at home, the T-Wolves, a seven and a half point dog against the Denver Nuggets. And Anthony Edwards does have a points prop listed at this moment. Vecchio, why is the spread so large in favor of Denver? Uh, that's because we know that Carl Anthony Towns is out. Rudy Gobert didn't, didn't play last night. He's listed as questionable for tonight. Nas Reed, who got the start at center last night, only played 17 minutes and left early, which means they are going to be significantly shorthanded, especially if Gobert does not play when it comes to big men, which means this could be a huge Jokic game. Not a surprise, as it could be every game. But specifically, I like Michael Porter, over 22.5 points plus rebounds. It's minus 125. This just could be a, a spot where Porter, Aaron Gordon, and Jokic steal all the rebounds tonight because Minnesota simply has no size out there. If Kyle Anderson and Jaden McDaniels are going to be required to do the heavy lifting and maybe even Luka Garza seeing some minutes, that is not a spot that the Timberwolves want to be in. It's simply an advantageous spot for the Nuggets who are coming off a full rest. It's all about Denver tonight. Let's head down to the Lone Star State here. Dallas Mavericks and the San Antonio Spurs. A heavy favorite here for the Dallas Mavericks at minus nine. The one thing I was interested in over the weekend was we saw that hamstring injury, that tightness from Luka Doncic. Didn't have any tightness as they had an unbelievable game against the Denver Nuggets, winning in the final moments with a Kyrie Irving de facto hook shot. But they're favored by close to double digits tonight over the Spurs. Tom, what are we looking at from this game between the Mavs and the Spurs? Uh, as usual, it's not going to any of the star players. It's going to a secondary market, and that's probably something to do with a Daniel Gafford points plus rebounds. He was obviously extremely efficient uh, week, week and a half going to hit, I don't know, 24, whatever it was, field goals in a row. But just because of the pace of this game was super high over-under, even though it's not like the best match of going against Wembyana, Wembyana's not going to be out there for the whole game, and Dallas is still pushing for playoffs slash play-in. So Gafford having close to 22 or so points plus rebounds combined is probably the best spot to go. Right now, Dallas in the seventh spot, but only a half game behind Sacramento, who currently occupies that sixth seed in the Western Conference standing. San Antonio, though, has been covering more as of late. Nine of their last 13, the Spurs have covered against the number. New Orleans, a hefty road favorite tonight in Brooklyn. Seven and a half point spread in favor of the Pels. What's the breakdown inside the Barclays Center? Uh, That's going to CJ McCollum under 16 and a half points and... You know, this is a really easy matchup going up against the Nets. The, the problem with McCollum, and it's not really anything against him. It's just he gets pushed out of the offense sometimes because Zion Williamson and Brandon Ingram are doing everything. So it's not like McCollum's doing anything wrong. He just doesn't have to be the main guy in offense. And, you know, his points are kind of trending down, at least to start March, compared to where they were. His field goal attempts are inconsistent. He's not shooting as well as he has for three. So McCollum under is probably the best spot to go simply because someone else and everyone else on the Pelicans just can have a big game. He doesn't need to have a big game realistically. You want March Madness? You got it starting tonight. You want Ice Madness. 13 games on the slate tonight in the NHL. Tom, any thoughts on any one of those games that really pique your interest here? That's really simple tonight. David Pasternak for the Bruins, over four and a half shots on goal. It's plus 100. He leads the league with 331 shots on goal. It's 4.7 per game. He's coming off a game where he had just a single shot on goal, and he's going up against the Senators. They're only 64 and a half total shot attempts uh, per 60 minutes in 5v5 situations since the start of March. That is the fourth worst in the league. So Bruins in a good spot to uh, grab a few points after the Panthers have slipped the past two games. So Bruins coming away with the win. Pasternak probably scoring as usual. A lot of shots on goal for him tonight as well. That's how you know Tom Vecchio is the Mm -hmm. best and the jack of all trades. We just showed you a board there. Six games of the 13 on the ice in the National Hockey League tonight. And Vecchio goes off board as the Bruins greater than a $2 favorite at home inside TD Garden against the Ottawa Senators. That is how much NHL action there is on this Tuesday. So let's show Tom's top props, the prop perspective on this Tuesday night as well. Mookie Betts for the early start tomorrow in the Soul Series between the Pod race and the Dodgers two plus total bases Michael Porter Jr. tonight for the Nuggets in a huge matchup in Minneapolis CJ McCollum under 16 and a half the Pels though a seven and a half point favorite in Brooklyn and David Pasternak over four and a half shots on goal for the Bruins tonight at home against the Senators Vecchio that is a master class my friend we appreciate the time we'll talk next week to get ready for a new year in Major League Baseball
Sounds great. Can't wait to be here.